Hello my Silk Universe! Europa League was an interesting evening yesterday. I have to say uh, most of the games were fun to watch. The problem is that I think six out of the eight ties are more or less already decided. And yeah, I was actually going initially for probably wearing Ajax, maybe Roma for this video, then I hung up the jerseys because Milan got the draw, but I don't want to jinx it in a way because you know a 1-1 one, one draw at United is a great result. They actually played well and and so on. But I said, nah, let's go with a team that actually did something really, really big. Uh, and then I hung the jerseys and then Milan ends up right behind me. Uh, the way the ranking of the favorites are. So I'm wearing Milan and as I said, I think they deserve to be worn because they played actually quite well. In a way they got robbed. Yes, they were also a little bit lucky as well. So, you know, um, give and take, we'll talk about the game once we get there. But yeah, that's my main headline, the big clash. Uh, I think Milan got a deserved draw. The other one is six ties already over. Uh, there's no one to say it. I mean, it's Ajax, it is Villarreal, it is Roma, it is Spurs, it's Granada, it's Arsenal. I don't see any way back uh, for the other opponents. So we have two that are still open. Um, uh, it was kind of funny because the early games, uh, yeah, the Ajax game got out of hand very late. We real, da, 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 we'll get to that. But the late games was all that um, the favorites um, took the lead in the first half. In the second half, kind of the outsiders came back and probably could have gotten an equalizer and in some cases did get an equalizer. And then um, well, the favorites moved away we, with it, with Spurs probably the only exception there. Let's, since I'm already talking so much about the games, let's uh, jump into the games and let's go um, uh, the way I have, have have it here on the menu. Uh, Ajax against Young Boys. That Ajax took 60 minutes to get the 1-0 was a little bit of a disappointment because, I mean, they were wasting chances left and right. Young Boys was not ready for Ajax. And you see it already there. I mean, Ajax is in the number three spot uh, in the current ranking. And I think that Ajax is probably the non-English team that I personally place the highest hopes on uh, winning the Europa League. I think they are a really, really, really good team that could do quite some damage. If it would be enough to beat one of the big English teams, if they are, that remains to be seen. But Ajax is a really, really, really good, good team. The 1-0 uh, by David Klassen, you know, I, I mean, already before that, there were so many chances missed. Young boys basically uh, had to defend, defend, defend. Uh, the assist was kind of, kind of funny because it came off the face of a, a young eBay defender and Klassen just puts it into the net. Um, and then, you know, you think maybe they, they get away with a defensive, I mean, the goalkeeper really, uh, for eBay, really did well. And you thought, yeah, maybe they get away with uh, a draw and they give, they give them uh, some, some life, but it all falls apart in the last 15 minutes. I mean, the 2 nil eBay has got, has, uh, squandered a chance they want to play out and then the player is completely missing it uh stairs is, is, is and yeah, the other the ball comes then to Tadic who can put it into the net uh to nil then uh after that Tadic had, had another good chance and then uh in stoppage time wonderful pass by Grachar Gravenberg <laughs> I hope I got that right to Probe who makes this 3 0 with a hint of offside. But I have to say, the 3 0 was everything of a 3 0. It could have been way worse for eBay. Uh, it has to be said that way. Dinamo Kiev against Villarreal was initially a very, very uh, open game. Fun to watch, but uh, you could see that Villarreal is getting into it and uh, better into the game and the way the first first goal I mean I think it was a corner kick and suddenly the ball comes out to Gerard Moreno on the uh, left with not much space to move but he gets the ball across the goal uh, to Paul Torres who makes it 1-0 uh, and from that moment on it was only gonna be Villarreal and the question was how high they will win well they get a sack, sack because after Moreno header Albiol can um, dust it off into the net Probably cool, could have been a little bit more. The game is also notable, there were some spectators there, but I think Villarreal also kind of cruising in that one already. Although, you know, they also had the two little Salzburg, and Salzburg could have put some, uh, pulled something off if they had a finisher there. United Milan. <sighs> I don't know what to make of this game. As I said, I think Milan 
played well. If you look at the lineups, I mean, both teams depleted. This was basically the big letdown of this entire um, tie. That, you know, you could have seen Slatan return to Old Trafford or uh, uh, Rashford playing Pogba, all the stars out. So uh, makeshift squads in, in, in a way. But I have to say for that, Milan played really well and it doesn't necessarily come as a surprise because Milan does that frequently. Uh, they just did it last weekend at Verona and that actually had me a little bit opt optimistic. I actually want to say, if Calabria and Salamakers are playing, then things are actually looking quite well for Milan. Uh, don't ask me why, but those two. And if Cassie is uh, romping through the midfield as he did again, I mean, he did everything. Make picking, picking runs, he is uh, quite easily. I mean, Slatan is the superstar, but Cassie is my favorite player at Milan at, at the moment. It's a joy to see him play. He is everywhere. Uh, he. Tackles, he uh, initiates uh, uh, forward attacks, he is everywhere, he does every, everything. He even scored a goal. With a, I mean, a first of all, Leao would have scored a goal, but that was a clear offset, okay. Given give that, then United had a, a good, good chance, but when Cassie scored, a wonderful strike. No one there was complaining about it, and then the referee seemingly saw a handball. To be honest, I'm not so sure. I actually said, I hate those German referees. And of course, the German commentators there, of course, they gotta back up the German referee. They would never do that when, when they're doing the Bundesliga, but in the Euro, I mean, our, our, our German guy. I honestly have to say, I, am, I would have loved if the referee could have had a look at this one. Uh, if he would see, because to me it was not con conclusive. It could have come off his hip, or I don't necessarily think it came off his hand. Maybe, it's maybe, but it's so inconclusive that I honestly think a goal should, should have stood. As I said, Milan, especially the first 25 minutes, played really well. They would have deserved the uh, goal there. Uh, they were also lucky because, I mean, Harry Maguire from point blank range, uh, I mean, not even a meter out. He's standing right in front of the empty goal and puts it onto the, uh, not the bar, the, <laughs> the, uh, the post. And it, it, was, it, took, it took a weird reflection. I mean, when you've seen the game, you don't know what happened here. This, this doesn't look right. And then you see it in the replay. Whoa, this is Harry Maguire. Uh, me, me, me miss, missing another big one. And yeah, so there was some luck there. Right on the other side, uh, when it started the second half, I mean, there was the yellow came on for Martial. Uh, and probably in his only really good action, Bruno Fernandes plays a wonderful pass that is exactly time so that Tomori doesn't know how to get there and Donnarumma doesn't know if he can, could, could go on. Diallo just with the back of his head puts it in the internet. That was a big downer. Uh, but Milan stayed in the game had actually quite some chances. I mean, Kronic should have probably made another goal. Uh, yes, look, was it Luke Shaw? Uh, should have made, no, James, then uh, then James, he should have made for sure the goal. I mean, wide open net, kind of pulled, 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 pulled it in. So yeah, it, it's this give and take, and maybe on average, uh, the draw is all right. Although I personally think that Milan was overall the better team, and fortunately they get the equalizer. Uh, through Simon Kier in the um, in stoppage time, <sighs> puts the advantage at the moment to Milan. But I also have to say um, this was the game where Milan should. Milan is better away from home, and United is better away from home. So mm -hmm. I th overall, still the advantage is we 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 with United. Although nominally a nil nil would be enough, but Milan doesn't play nil nils anymore. Uh, another one that will not be happy with the result is Slavia Prague. I mean, Stancho gives them a great opening goal, then they were pressing to get the second and get caught. Uh, where Haji, I think, hits the, the also the post, and then the ball comes to Helander. And maybe may mix it 1 1 from then. The, the game is kind of uh, even. I still thought the Slavia had a bit more chances, but yeah, this is the other tie that is still very much open. Roma against Schachter. I think in the first half it was all Roma and they only got one goal. Pelle, uh, Pedro assisting Pellegrini really nicely. I think Pellegrini had, had another uh, head of his just scraped off the line. Uh, Schachter did not really show up. However, they came in the second half and um, there were almost there was almost an own goal by Mancini. Uh, you know, it was 
There was really a period uh, early in the second time where Shakhtar really showed, yeah, we actually belong here and we probably should get an equalizer here. However, once Mayoral plays a ball to El Sharavi, who dribbles across the goal mouth and puts it in net, that did the game. Uh, Sharavi then should have made a, se a second, a third for Roma, but from that uh, cor uh, corner, Cristante uh, prolongs the Mancini, heads it in into the net. 3 0, and yeah, that tie is uh, settled, and Roma deserve it winners there. Uh, Spurs against Zagreb, that was maybe really all Spurs. Zagreb a little bit showing in the second half. Spurs, I think, should have gotten a penalty. The goals, the first goal was all Eric Lamella, uh, who just hit the post and then uh, it, the ball falls to Kane, who puts himself in the right, right position and also credit to him for looking that he's not offside in that position. So uh, that was pretty good, but it was all Eric Lamella. However, the second goal from Harry Kane, this was just excellent. The ball falls, falls to him after the clearance attempt. He controls it. And you can see that the, um, he wants to maybe go past, past the defender and the defender tries to stop that. And he just uh, pulls it back a, a little bit to make the, let the defender make the move and puts it through the legs into that. This was an expertly done goal. Uh, I love finishes like that. Spurs firmly in control in that one. And I don't want to say much, but I, because Spurs had work, is coming off a rough patch. But when I look at all the teams in the Europa League, I think they seem to me as the most complete team in there. Let's put it that way. They seem to me the most complete team in there. Uh, defensively, kind of all right. Maybe goalkeeper could do something. And offensively, uh, they have the most power for sure there. Granada Molde, very, very tough game. Um, where uh, Molde really gave it their all and Granada had to work really, really, really hard. The 1-0 was a goalkeeper assist. A free kick uh, out on the side, close to the box, plays it long and there's a foul in, uh, you know, or, 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 or close to the, oppo uh, the oppo opposing box. Uh, but the referee lets it go and the ball falls to Jorge Molina who puts it in the internet. This was a beautifully done goal. Um, Molde though fought back and I think it was not an easy game for Granada who of course are the more talented side um, and Jorge Molina then assists Soldado where I have to say the goal goal goalkeeper thought, thought probably it's going uh, into a corner cor 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 and not onto the inside of the post. Would still be a, it would be a hard one, but it, it didn't look, look good. But it was another really nicely played uh, attack by uh, Granada who get the Tuni lead and I don't think Molde can come back from that one. I thought that Olympiacos had a chance against Arsenal, although Arsenal in the first half overall in the game, definitely the better team doing more for the game. The problem is Arsenal's nuclear option is that their defense is just coughing up uh, balls like crazy. I mean, David Luiz uh, coughed one up in that in the game after Udegaard with a great shot where the goalkeeper there should, should, should have saved it. Um, but you know, uh, David Luiz Kof, Kof, I mean, uh, Olympiakos needs to score from that one. Uh, the second one, yes, uh, a similar uh, deadly pass and Al-Arabi Al intercepts it. It's 1-1. And at that point, I really thought that Olympiakos can hurt Arsenal. However, I have to give lots of credit to Ar Arsenal. They get back in the game and then late on they decide Villian with a cross to Gabriel um, who heads it in. And then El Neni who had just come on... Um, with a, a shot from a far out, makes it 3-1. And yeah, Arsenal, I think, is also through with that. Probably more so than, let's say, Spurs against Zagreb or even Granada against Molde. So yeah, um, as I said, six of the ties more or less decided. This means now we have the following um, listing for the favorites. Arsenal at the moment are the favorites. Uh, and this is mostly to, uh, due to the fact that they are more or less secure in the next round. I mean, Spurs is a little bit behind. And I think our Arsenal still has a higher rating than Spurs. Ajax also in there as well as is United. You see it's very, very tight. Arsenal, Spurs, Ajax, uh, United, Roma and Villarreal. Uh, it's among those. Milan, since the outsiders against United are only down to 5%. If they would beat United, I think they would join the pack, but it's it's a very open competition. At this moment, I, I don't want to bet on it, but I think I feel that Spurs are the, probably the best team, but you never know. I mean, let's see what the North London Derby brings um, 
it uh, this weekend. And then we have the return legs. I mean, the early games, as, as I said, maybe the Zagreb Spurs game. And yes, I called it when the draw, draw was made that there will probably a switch of home field advantage because both London teams were supposed to play at home in the second leg. So uh, that, that that's right. So all of the early, early games, I don't think there is much there. But of course, I will watch. Uh, the excitement comes in the late game. And I'm actually considering of only watching Milan United because the other games, I don't think uh, there's much in it. We are real will, will, will not lose that one and I don't see Ajax either getting eliminated by young young boys. Not based on that, that performance. And this one week uh, in between the two two games, it's usually a very tight turn to turn around. There's not that much uh, hype happening. I mean, if there's a two week uh, period in, in, in between there or a three week like in the Champions League, there might be some stuff stuff happening. But one week, unlikely. In any case, let me know what you thought about the Europa League uh, yesterday evening. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Who are your fav favorites to win it? Is it Arsenal? Is it United? Is it Spurs? Is it Ajax? I want to know. Uh, and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos on the Europa League or any other competition that is that I'm covering this channel or jerseys. I will have a new jersey video out tomorrow and I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye